I'm Joel Dietz, I'm CEO of um, Evergreen, uh, greens.io. Very passionate about um, the Ethereum project and other improvements that are going on right now in this sort of decentralized application layer. And I think when now that we're seeing this sort of fallout in Gox and these um, you know, parties that have not been particularly responsible with the funds they were entrusted with, it just re-emphasizes the need not necessarily for external regulation, I think there will be a lot of call for that, obviously, and that's sort of the track that's being used by um, many companies, the Coinbase and Circle. They've you know gone in and integrated very carefully with the existing banking system. I'm not opposed to that, but I think that really the the ultimate growth and need in in the market um, at this moment is for trust networks that really build in sort of reputational systems that can sort of validate things without the need for existing proxy services, including um, governments and sort of the legal system. I think those things get used to, you know, to a certain point, but the real growth, and this is you know, why the sort of smart contract um, ability of Ethereum is so important and potentially revolutionary, is that it allows people to have the complete freedom to design these systems from scratch and evolve them um, incrementally, experimentally. And we're already seeing um, in the sort of Ethereum umbrella a lot of fascinating discussions of how to build a robust web of trust for the future that doesn't force necessarily, you know, real name verification, doesn't force um, you to use your Facebook account, but still allows a very high um, degree of trust and within certain networks. And I think that's really the direction, you know, all of governance is moving in, um, in the sense that in the past, all government has essentially been opt out. You're, you're forced into a particular political context, you're born into a particular municipality or locality or ethnicity, and you are associated with those people by default, and you don't really necessarily have the option of um, disassociating or associating with something. And this isn't really at this moment um, by any means a replacement for that, but um, you're increasing this possibility of having this meta layer that you build on top of existing infrastructure um, that provides a, an additional layer of services and can be more robust than the, the layer that's below it. So when you see all this you know, corruption and sort of things that have very obviously and clearly been happening in the sort of mainstream banking system um, and, and to a certain degree also are polluting the Bitcoin system at this moment, um, there's this just incredible possibility of, of building something that is newer, better, more resilient, basically provides all of the services you expect in, in a more efficient way. And so much of the sort of cost that people are paying right now on top of things, and this is you know dramatically clear in this in this case, are on top of this sort of pollution that's already in the system and you're basically either paying to clean up the pollution or you're paying to, you know, kind of keep it at bay or, or all these sort of things. And the better the system is that is designed to prevent that from entering in the first place, essentially the, the more positive benefit there is to everyone who's, who's doing business in the system. And additionally, I think there is a need um, both for sort of centralized systems and decentralized systems. I don't think there is one model that is the solution. I think the sort of distributed na nature of the blockchain is really the most resilient solution. And I think that's why it's a solution that's come along first, because um, otherwise, as we've seen with sort of past contenders uh, who were trying to provide digital currencies, um, they were just shut down um, because they had centralized point of failure. And Bitcoin does not have that. Um, that's true of basically all of the cryptocurrencies that exist. They're vulnerable to certain things, um, like the 51% the attack, but they're extraordinarily resilient compared to most centralized systems. But at the same point, um, there are a lot of sort of, you know, when it comes to usability and ease of, you know, just ease of use and, you know, transfer mechanisms, there's a lot of cases where centralized systems, but partially because they deal with large amounts of flow, can actually optimize, put a lot of, you know, take essentially a small amount of resources through a large number of transactions and then use that to build infrastructure and kind of guarantee a certain experience on top of that infrastructure, which you can't get um, across a large body. And I think we're finding that right now, even within the Bitcoin thing, which I personally find troubling, um, largely because, you know, the, the you know, I don't, I don't criticize the people, you know, the, the heads of Kraken and um, Circle and Coinbase and, you know, Bitstamp and whatever, Bobby Lee from Bitcoin China for coming out and making this uh, joint statement. But it, it kind of has this eerie sort of centralized, you know, we are the, 
the top tier of the Bitcoin thing uh, world and we are sort of you know, integrating with government, to me, it destroys a lot of the value that you see in something like Bitcoin, where the distributed nature, um, you know, is really what gives us the strength. And if you're just saying, you know, we are an organ of the government and we're, you know, closely, you know, tied in with the existing infrastructure, then like, what is the point of using this at all? Is it is it just? And, and this is what some of these people really want it to be. I think they just want it to be a um, sort of new PayPal that gives you a slight um, benefit, um, you know, a slightly lower fee for transferring funds. And um, I think the real potential for these networks is so much larger than that. I'm very, very excited about sort of the second generation of the Bitcoin stuff. And I really wish that it was here now. I wish that, you know, MasterCoin was fully released. I wish that whatever ProtoShares next, you know, were farther along they are. And I really wish, you know, Ethereum had all this stuff um, fully ready to go because there's just so many things that you can do along those things. And, and, and it's going to be experimental, like I said before. But we have that possibility right now of building that, you know, uh, trust layer in a way that is totally opt-in. So it's not forced. And, and that's one of the awesome things about it, too, is that with something like Ethereum, it's not like the protocol has a single you know version of this. It can have multiple competing versions of this. Obviously, there will be a network effect from the people that get stuff up and running more quickly and, and more robust early on, and, and that can scale. But um, you know, you just don't have that option right now. And then you have these kind of fallout, the massive fallout that I think we're going to have, and is going to very severely impact the reputation of Bitcoin and the whole Bitcoin community, and be a massive setback. So I don't know. Fundamentally, I, I agree with the sort of Eric um, Borges statement about the sort of you know that there's a natural process that when you build towers, you know, some of them will fall over. But I think there's also a need to you know use stronger materials in the construction of those towers and maybe even appoint guardians to kind of protect them so that you're not liable when you know these sort of little floods you know it's sort of the whole classic do you building on sort of your castle on the sand or are you building on something that has a strong foundation and um, finding that sort of foundation to build it on so that it it doesn't become something that you know rises up to you know whatever ten billion dollars and then washes out is extraordinarily important for the long-term viability of all of this stuff. Those are my thoughts, and um, thank you. Would you like to buy Bitcoin? Cash into Coins provides the fastest, easiest, and safest way to buy Bitcoin in the United States. Simply place an order online, deposit cash at any supported bank, and relax. Cash into Coins will verify your deposit and send out your Bitcoin within 24 hours. Join tens of thousands of people who have purchased from Cash into Coins. What are you waiting for? Buy your Bitcoin today. Go to cashintocoins.com. That's cashintocoins.com.